So you guys know, I did a series a little over a year ago called Voice of the Vloggers, and everyone loved it. Basically what I did was, I did dual vlogs with a bunch of different moto vloggers, and we put those up on the channel. Uh, one went on my channel, we recorded a second vlog, and that would go on the other person's channel. So, whoever watched my channel but didn't watch the other person's channel would get exposed to that, per that person, and vice versa. So, the whole goal of this was to use the platform that I have with the subscriber base that I have and start off the series with bigger name vloggers that everyone pretty much knows to kind of get the series kind of pumping, get it, get it flowing. And then I was going to go and do the same exact thing with a bunch of new slash less known vloggers um, in a attempt to bring as many people to as many motivable as many god damn as many motor vloggers as humanly possible so the series was going very, really well everybody liked it i did a dual vlog with chase i did a dual vlog with do it with dan um a couple other different people um did one moto nasty which he didn't realize his gopro was recording after like 40 minutes of recording but um i also recorded one with my buddy sticker bomb now this is not new this is about a year old um but it's still very relative um, and this is kind of the beginning of Voice of the Vloggers again. You're not going to see another Voice of the Vloggers for a couple of weeks. Um, it's going to take a little bit because I need to start reaching back out to people. The series stopped because I got a little ahead of myself. Um, I was thinking I'd be able to be like, all right, when can you record? All right, well, I'll call you then. We'll do this and blah, 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 blah. We'll put everything up and everything will work smoothly. Well, there's a bunch of scheduling conflicts and things just went wrong and I just really wasn't thinking about those possibilities that were very real because I was so ridiculously stoked to do this because I had this great idea and I thought it'd be great for the community. So here we are a little over a year later and you're seeing one of the videos I recorded way back then. But this is something I want to start up again. I'm going to start reaching out to guys, um, getting people on board again and hopefully in the next month, maybe two months, I'm hoping for the next month, um, hopefully by the end of March, beginning of April, um, you guys will see um, the voice of the vlogger starts trickling back in. Going to reach out to Dan, uh, Chase, obviously I did two with him, um, two on my channel and two on his channel. He actually got pulled over on the video on his channel. But um, yeah, so enjoy this video. It was a lot of fun. I've known Sticker for years now. I met him at the Yummy R6 meetup uh, that I had. Me and uh, Yummy hosted down in Virginia Beach like three years ago now. Um, but yeah, enjoy the video. It's a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully we can get the series back full force here in the next uh, month. And uh, enjoy the video. Peace! Alright, what is going on guys? Welcome to the newest edition of Voice of the Vloggers. And today, we got a guy that I met two years ago, whenever I had my meetup with Yummy in Virginia Beach. And that is the one and only uh, Mr. Stickerbond. What's going on, bro? Hey, what's up guys? Hi, I'm waving to you. Yay, I love telephones and Cena's. It's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so just like I've done with most people, um, just in case there's some people on my channel that have never heard of you and are just finding out about you, um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your channel, what kind of videos you can expect from your channel, and just kind of like a general like synopsis of what you got going on over on your channel. Okay. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's totally just normal vlog shit. It's, God, it's fucking, oh, come on, FedEx. <laughs> I'm, dude, our, okay, so our work is right next to this, like, FedEx plant, and there's always trucks going super slow down this road. Anyways, um, my channel is pretty, pretty generic in the sense of it's vlogs, kind of whatever I put up, um, but I have a, I have a super heavy focus in kind of talking with the, like, actually, like, having a conversation with the people who watch my content, um, so a lot of it is like, hey guys, you know, I'm catching you up on stuff, or whatever. I very rarely only have vlogs where I just talk straight to myself the whole time. <laughs> um, I do a lot of dual vlogs. I love dual vlogs. Dual vlogs are fucking awesome, so you guys can definitely watch for a lot of those. And a big feature that I have on my channel specifically is something I called Project M. And it's this big whole vlogger showcase of getting kind of like behind the scenes interviews and everything with... Um, with motor vloggers, so definitely check those out. Um, I'm sorry for those that, of you who are that serious. <laughs> 
That series <laughs> kind of reminds me of like the real world whenever the people on the show go in like the confession room. Basically, yeah, that's like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like motovlogger confession room. Yeah, no, it totally is. It's uh, it's it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation about yeah, almost kind of like this. You know, how'd your channel get started? Why did you do it? You know, the whole nine yards. But yeah. it's not on a bike. It's one-on-one -on -one with a camera. You know, just me asking genu you know, like genuine questions of okay, you know, why did you do it this way? Um, and it's it's very channel related, but it's also very why did you get into motorcycles related as well. So it's a lot of fun. You guys definitely need to check it out. And I, Mr. by the way, have always fucking loved that idea. Ever since you kind of fucking said it in the group <laughs> chat, I fucking absolutely loved it. And I've watched a few. I haven't watched all of them, but I I definitely yeah, yeah. made sure that whenever I saw Downies go up, I definitely made sure to watch the entire one. My my wife walked in. She was like. Are you really sitting here watching 30 minutes of Downshift talking with no head? And I was like, you're goddamn right I'm listening to Downshift yeah, talk with no head. Man, Fuck it's so, yeah, it's I so love this it. shit. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Because, I mean, to me, I feel like that series is great because when when subscribers watch, like, all of us, they, they see a, a different person. Even if you're not really different on, on, on your channel than you are in real life, yeah, you're seeing, a like, a persona. You're not seeing the person. Yeah. So, like... Especially like if you watch downshifts, if you've been somebody who's watched downshift for a while, it's not so much like nowadays because Downey's channel used to be really like just a hardcore fucking badass dude that you think he like fucking yeah. eats babies at night and rips <laughs> wheelies on the highway. Th those were now San Diego kind of, days. Yeah, exactly. So now it's it's more like you get to see him and his personality. So you don't you don't think he's just like. Big, 100 100 percent that is 100 percent the whole purpose of this entire series is you know it's kind of like a man behind the mask setup um, exactly but behind it behind that there's some people who don't have a mask you know like goku mitsu when i did his you know he he doesn't mind showing his face so it's more or less yeah. kind of like a just a hey you're a content creator i'm a content creator share your story yeah yeah, so, no, I, uh, it's a shitload of fun, and you guys can totally expect ZJ to be on there. It, right now, I mean, obviously, what we're doing right now is kind of a little bit different than you know DSLR camera footage and everything. But don't not, do not worry. If you guys are interested, it's going to happen. I promise you. Yeah, I can't fucking wait. I've actually been fucking digging up stickers to ask about this shit about when we're going to do it for, <laughs> for the last couple months. I'm like, dude, have you got your fucking questions together? Let's fucking do this shit. And he's oh like, calm gosh. the fuck dude, down. I, dude, I've been so fucking busy with work. It turns out it's kind of interesting. When I started working at Bedlam Works, I was like, yeah, motorcycles all the time. This is going to be great. But then I never realized that after I moved my editing rig from home to work so that I could edit at work, now I can't edit at home, so like yeah, my channel, yeah, my my channel and work are now together, like they're like one entity. So, like I always feel like I don't have enough time during the day. Oh, dude, you're preaching to the choir. Why do you think, aside from all the issues I had with work, why do you think I left? I was working Monday through Saturday, 70 hours a week. You know how hard it is to keep up a fucking <laughs> a legitimate channel with Dude, fucking three uploads a week while working 70 hours and I having an imagine. hour commute there and back Dude, i couldn't imagine fucking, like, like that's why i was getting so pissed because like i've i've worked for three plus years to build my channel and to get it to where it is and uh, i'll be damned if a job that's not paying yep. me fucking godlike sums of money is going to hinder that whenever yep. like I, i've done so much to get to where i am I'm yep. not going to fucking watch it go down the toilet for fucking working 70 hours at a slave shop. Like, it's not happening. Yep. And that's kind of one, that's something I wanted to avoid. Whenever I was talking to the owners of Bedlam Works, they were like, hey, yeah, you can just kind of like bring your channel over. And I was like, no, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my thing. I will definitely help you guys exactly. run your own. But that's something that's yeah. kind of like my one hobby that I do outside of motorcycles. Uh, but it includes motorcycles. Like it's, yeah. that's the only other thing I do like die hard. So it, it's yeah. it's I have a lot of passion behind it. But That's anyways, enough about that bullshit. What else you got? What else you hey, got? Rev bomb. That was fucking awesome. What's up? You didn't hear that epic ass rev bomb on the Grom on the under the overpass? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was a gorgeous. Oh Dude, this my thing God. sounds so fucking awesome. Okay. But uh, anyway, let's get back to the topic and stop fucking creaming on the ground. So, um, 
All right, so you already told us about the channel, kind of like what you what you do, what you got on there. Yeah. So yeah. another question that I that I that I try and ask pretty much everyone I do this series with, um, what made you decide to make a YouTube channel? And not just that, but whenever you decided that you wanted to make a YouTube channel, what was kind of like your thought behind it? Did you envision like this being something that you knew you were going to be like extremely passionate about and very particular with making sure everything looks super perfect or did th that just kind of happen? Because I know you're one of the, you're one of the people that I always think of when it comes to like high quality shit. I know how fucking amazing you are when it comes to <laughs> shooting video with your DSLR and I know how much of a perfectionist you are. And I mean, I've talked to you before about different settings and shit to yeah, shoot yeah, on yeah. whenever I first got my DSLR. So I know how big into the camera, I mean, well, anybody who watches Chase knows that you help Chase shoot most of his cinematic footage. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I, it's kind of interesting. Chase and I are, are like puzzle pieces when it comes to filming cinematic stuff. Both of us by ourselves are great, uh, and I'm not. I'm not just blowing air up my ass. I, legitimately, I, I stand by my work. I love it. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Chase's editing skills are off the chart. It's incredible. He They're can film. Ridiculous. He, he can edit. He can do all of that. But when the two of us come together, it just works, and it's awesome. Yeah. I love filming more than I love editing, and Chase pretty much loves editing more than he loves filming. Like, he, he definitely yeah. spends a lot more time and effort on uh, on what he edits more than spending time on, on capturing. And I'm not going to say, like, like as a sacrifice to, sacrifice to quality, but I do, I do most... I do most of the filming, and he, he he edits it all together. It's fucking insane. Yeah, that bitch better spend time, because this is his goddamn yeah. job, and I'm going to need <laughs> to take so it seriously. Sure. I'm going to need him to take his job seriously, so if you're watching this shit, Chase, you better be in front of that computer editing a vlog right, right now. You got it. Dude, he's always, he, like, his second monitor, he'll watch stuff or listen to it while he's editing. I don't know anyone yeah, who no, will do that. I can't listen to I someone was, talk to me while I'm trying to listen to myself <laughs> talk. Like, I yeah, can't. no. That doesn't work for me. I was talking me. him about about um, when he was going to be able to get up the uh, second, our second dual vlog that we did on his channel. So I could kind of try to plan around when I was going to be able to get mine up because I was going out of town and shit. Yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, just make sure you get me that shit tonight. And it was like fucking, he's putting it up Tuesday. He was like, yeah, I'm editing these three videos that I have to get done by tonight. And it was like five. He's like, I got to get all these videos done by tonight at eight. Uh, shoot me over your footage. I should be able to download it in like... 45 yeah. minutes and I can I can throw I can throw that shit together in like 30 minutes and I was like god damn yeah. hey, dude it, you want to talk about somebody who lives by a schedule Chase is the man he is the one oh, like yeah. I've yeah. never seen somebody who has a schedule for how long they can cook and then eat their food like it gets <laughs> it gets pretty bad but um uh, and and that kind of relates back to what you're asking about um, why I started and where where I kind of thought I wanted to go with it um, Chase was actually the first person I found you know as most people would say um, Me too. And it was cool because I, I, I had the, the mental relation of like, hey, that guy's in Georgia. Hey, that guy rides motorcycles. Hey, this guy likes video and filming, you know, like all, all like what I do. And me and my roommate just watched Chase's videos forever. I mean, it, it felt like it was like months and months and months and months of just straight watching his content. And then I slowly started looking for other people, you know, through his mention or, you know, people he collaborated with and slowly started to find others and then i was like wait a minute i have a motorcycle i have an editing pc i have a gopro i can fucking do this and yeah. lo and behold started my channel sticker bombed because of my sticker bombed a motorcycle um <laughs> yeah and by the as, way since you guys are not familiar with if you guys are not familiar with sticker bomb i'm gonna put up a picture of his bike the way it looked whenever i first met sticker bomb at the meetup <laughs> Man, I, I gotta say, whenever I met you for the first time, I saw your bike, I was like, what the fuck <laughs> is that? Not only because it was, like, so insane looking, but because yeah, yeah. it was such a fucking personalized piece of machinery. Dude, and that's how it's supposed like, to be. A lot of people... Yeah, like, a lot of people, if they just glance at it, they'd be like, what's that piece of shit? Like, what the fuck is that? Dude, but she's 100% like a, little... a rat bike. 100% exactly. a rat bike. Exactly. But then when you take a closer look, you see that it's not just, like, covered in stickers because the paint's fucked up or this or that. It's covered in stickers because that's how you wanted it to be. Yep. Everything on the bike was functional until it blew up. And yeah, well, yeah, that was a whole, that's a whole separate story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to have to go through the, the, 
the, the, the depths of Sticker Bomb's yeah, channel and, I, and get I, the whole backstory on what happened to her. Yeah, that's that's yeah. You guys can do your research. Go go find uh, Ruth died. Yeah, I, and but, I, um, I gotta say the first after, time after you fucking honked that horn, that horn. The first time you honked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost pissed my pants. Oh, dude, Ooh. I. Uh, and it's so sad because it's not on here right now, and I I get oh, so bummed sad. every time I think about that horn. Dude, that shit had me dying because I remember when you did it in the middle of the meetup, and I yeah. fucking I, I fucking lost it. I was like, what the fuck? And then Yo. of course, out of all the bikes it's coming off of, it's the one that sticks out Yo. because it's covered in seven thousand stickers. Yo, <laughs> it it's the hilarious. one bike that doesn't belong, and it makes its yeah. statement like everywhere. It's, yep. it's great. Oh, oh, it sure does. It makes much more of a statement than I would say any of the other motorvloggers' bikes out there. <laughs> Here we go. I found a tunnel. <laughs> I found, I fucking found a tunnel. All right, so that's it, guys. Have a good one, and uh, see you next time. Peace.